how's it going? Lee Hayward here, right now, out for a mountain bike ride, and it is absolutely gorgeous out here today. <sighs> Take off the helmet, get some air to my melon here. <laughs> so how are you holding up? I don't even know we're in the middle of the whole uh, COVID shutdown, and this, what I'm doing right now, is one of my committed habits that I want to do on a daily basis is just get outside and enjoy some fresh air, some exercise, and this makes a huge difference, not only physically, but mentally as well. This is a must-do for me on a regular basis, and I'm just curious, like, how are you dealing with the situation right now? Like, what are you doing? Let me know down in the comments below, what are your strategies for not only keeping fit, but enjoying yourself and keeping yourself sane and, and basically just, uh, I guess, <laughs> reducing stress, reducing the anxiety of the situation. Because right now, most people are not dealing with it very well. I mean, if you look at the statistics, like I was just in doing some research on this, and uh, the statistics are quite scary. Like, uh, junk food sales are up 41% over this time last year. So, I mean, just think about that. Alcohol sales up over 50%. I think it's I think it's like 58% or somewhere like that over this time last year. Uh, Netflix subscriptions at an all-time high. You know, social media use is at an all-time high. So, bottom line, people are eating more, drinking more, spending more time watching TV, and compound that with the fact that the gyms are closed, all parks and recreation centers and things like that are closed. I mean, it don't take a rocket scientist to figure it out and put it all together that that is the recipe for obesity. I mean, that is some scary stuff right there. And, I mean, I'm not here to kind of point the finger. Like, I can understand why people are resorting to eating and drinking and television and all that as a form of a distraction because it's it's a surefire distraction. <laughs> it is. It's a surefire stress relief. Like, in the moment... If you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling stressed, and you need a quick relief, alcohol works, junk food works, television and, and all these distractions work, but is it what you really want to be doing long term? Like, is it a good solution to the problem? And what I'm here to, to kind of propose is I'm, I'm not trying to be the, the so-called trainer that, that shames you into taking action. You know, the, the fat shaming and, the, and the, you know, the yelling and the screaming and saying, hey, you know, don't be, don't be a weak pussy. You know, get yourself outdoors. Get yourself active. Like, hey, don't give in to the junk food. Eat good. Like, that approach never works. Right. I mean, we see it all the time. Like, look at, uh, you know, the, the TV shows like The Biggest Loser and stuff where you have these drill surgeon personal trainers out there who are shouting and yelling and shaming fat people for being fat. Like, that doesn't work. I mean, OK, it gets ratings on TV and stuff like that. But you look at the long term results. It's it's not a positive change. At best, it's a temporary change. Because what I've found through personal experience, and, and I mean, I've been in, in both extremes. I've been a competitive bodybuilder in peak competition shape. I've been overweight and out of shape and depressed and struggled with eating disorders. So I can relate to both sides of the situation. And this extreme all or nothing approach does not produce lasting change. So what I'm encouraging you to do, if you are in that situation right now where you're kind of struggling with this, like intellectually, you know what you should be doing, but you just can't get yourself to do it for whatever reason. And again, I don't know what that reason is for you, but I want you to kind of look at how are you dealing with it? What are you doing right now? I mean, are you, you know, guilty of eating too much food, especially processed junk food or takeout and delivery and, and fast food and things like that? Have you been drinking more alcohol? Have you been spending more time in front of the television and not enough time, you know, doing exercise, whether it's getting outside for exercise or whether it's doing home workouts? And just look at how those choices are affecting your life. And I want you to kind of like lay it out in a, like a pros and cons. Like look at your current approach and let's just take junk food, for example. Like why are you consuming junk food? Why? I mean, yeah, you can say, okay, it tastes good and everything else, but like there's a deeper reason for it. I mean, there's a reason it's probably because at some level it's meeting one of your emotional needs or maybe several of your emotional needs. I mean, it's probably a stress relief, right? It probably makes you feel good in the moment. 
Uh, you know, it's a distraction, right? I mean, eating and watching TV and stuff like that, it distracts you from the day-to-day -day reality. Because, I mean, like, we're in uncertain times and people are feeling the stress of it. Like, even I'm feeling the stress of it. I'm not going to lie. I, I find the struggle and I try my best to deal with it, but I'm far from perfect. It's hard to distance yourself from it because every time you turn on the television, every time you go on social media, every time you go to the store, I mean the grocery store or wherever you go, you are constantly reminded about the situation we're in. So it's, it's kind of hard to distance yourself from it. Oh, we got a car coming there. I'm going to move over or a Jeep, I should say. <laughs> He's getting through it there. I'm up on the pole line here. That's where I'm to right now, you know, up on my mountain bike. Uh, thankfully, the, the trails are clear for the most part and I can actually get through and ride, but there is a lot of snow still on the ground, as you can see. So, I mean, a lot of the trails are not fully open yet and there's a lot of muck, but uh, hey, <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm outside and I'm enjoying it nonetheless. So, where was I? I kind of lost my train of thought there for a second. But, yeah, okay, I wanted to talk about, like, why are you doing what you're doing? And let's just look at the reasons behind it. So, if it is junk food or if it is alcohol, like, look at it from a pro and con point of view. Like, don't think of it as, I don't want you to shame yourself into thinking, you know, oh, I need to stop this and I need to do better because that never works. Think of, okay, why are you doing what you're currently doing? And if it's because, okay, it provides a distraction, if it's because it provides some, uh, you know, enjoyment, if it because it makes you feel good. Uh, I mean, look at it, okay, that's true, it does, but what are the long-term consequences of that? Like, let's just zoom out and pretend, okay, you're taking that action and you do it over the course of several weeks, several months, even, you know, stretch it out over the course of several years. Now, I'm not, I'm not hoping that this situation we're in right now lasts, you know, years. I mean, my God, I certainly hope not. I hope it's over in the matter of, of weeks or at the most a couple of months, but look at the long-term implication of it. I mean, experts are now predicting that the average person is going to gain, you know, 15 to 20 pounds of pure body fat due to this whole coronavirus, I don't know, lockdown quarantine that we're in, you know, because of the situation that people are under, you know, not be able to go to the gym, forced to stay at home and, and looking for these not so healthy solutions to deal with stress. And of course, the, the result of this is, is, is gaining body fat. And then what happens when you gain body fat, right? How do you feel about yourself? Chances are, I mean, your self-esteem goes down. You know, you, you, you probably suffer from depression. I mean, it just makes you feel like shit. Let's be honest. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It makes you feel like shit. It makes you feel worse. And then how do people deal with it? Very often, then they do more of what made them feel like shit in the beginning. They start eating even more because now they're not happy and they want to find some way to temporarily make themselves happy. So then they eat even more food. They eat, drink even more booze. They watch even more TV. And it's just this negative spiral. Even though intellectually, you know, you shouldn't do it. You know that in the short term, it's going to make you feel good. And that short term pleasure, that short term distraction is worth the long term pain. And that's why people keep going back to these old habits. So what I'm proposing is try and find another avenue to satisfy those needs. So let's just look at exercise, like what I'm doing right now. I mean, this is a lot of fun. Now, I'm not saying you got to have a mountain bike and go out in the, in the woods like this, but even if it's just getting outside for a walk, that provides distraction. That provides some mental and emotional relief. I mean, to get out here in the fresh air, it just makes me feel good. So I could sit at home, watch television. I could crack open a bag of potato chips. You know, I could get myself a six pack of beer or I could order a pizza or something like that. And I would get some temporary pleasure. I would get some temporary distraction, but look at the side effects of that versus the side effects of this getting outside for a bike ride. I mean, this has a lot of positives and very few negatives, right? Like the, the, the result of this is I'm going to be healthier. I'm going to burn body fat. I'm going to feel better. And it's, it's, it actually makes me better all around, whereas the other alternative doesn't. So this is one of my go-to strategies. And another plus is when you're out exercising, you're not eating. <laughs> so if you're looking for a way to control your appetite and control the cravings and eating out of boredom and emotional eating, then getting outside the house as best as you can, especially if you can get outside in nature like I am right now, that provides a healthy form of distraction. And it's one where you're not eating 
because I'm going to tell you, the more you exercise, the less you eat. And it's weird because it actually helps to control your appetite. When you're out working the body, getting the blood flow and the circulation and the endorphins and burning body fat, it actually controls your appetite. You don't feel as hungry. Like sometimes after a big bike ride, I'm thirsty and I want to rehydrate and I want to rest, but it, it, it doesn't necessarily make me want to eat more. And if I do have an appetite, like you work up a, an appetite from riding, very often I want to satisfy that with something good and healthy, something that's going to nourish my body versus something that's going to, uh, you know, toxify it and, and tear it down. Like I, I wouldn't want to go home after a hard bike ride and say, hey, I want to sit back and drink booze or, I, you know, I want to fill up on junk food because it's contradictory to what I just did. Like I spent all this time and energy doing something positive, productive, and healthy. It's 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 a negative congruency where it doesn't feel right to then follow that up with something that's going to break my body down and cause even more pain and discomfort. So look for ways on how you can positively impact your, your situation and positively get the stress relief that you need because you need it. You need to fill the void. And, and the, one of the biggest problems I see in, in the whole, uh, you know, the, the diet industry where people try to lose weight, try to get in shape, is they think of what they need to avoid. Like they think, well, I got to stop eating junk food, right? I got to stop doing this. I got to stop doing that. Well, the problem is whatever it is you were doing served a purpose. And if you just stop doing it, like if you just stop eating junk food and you don't fill the void, then it's never going to last. So you have to replace what it is you were doing with something else that's going to make you feel better. And it's going to give you the, the same benefits that that unhealthy habit did. So swapping out television with exercise is a great swap because you get the distraction you get the the mental and physical well you, you don't get physical variety when you're watching tv but you get the mental variety of getting outside plus you're getting the benefits of the physical exercise and the endorphins and all that good stuff so i'm filling the void like i'm swapping uh, you know maybe a couple hours of netflix with a couple hours of bike riding this is a good healthy swap when it comes to your eating how can you swap out the junk food for good healthy food and like make those switches so instead of having say i'm craving something sweet i'm going to eat a candy bar i'll say hey i'm craving something sweet i'm going to eat some fruit i'm going to eat something that is healthy like i've got several uh, healthy uh, recipes that i go to like i have a homemade high protein ice cream recipe that tastes delicious tastes like ice cream high in protein virtually fat-free, very low in carbohydrates, very low in sugar, and it actually nourishes the body versus just loading it up with empty calories. So instead of eating, you know, ice cream and, and sweet processed junk food, I'll eat that instead. And if you want to check that out, I'll put a link up there in the cards there somewhere to my uh, top five craving crusher recipes. And these are healthy, delicious recipes that uh, will fuel you, not fill you up with empty calories that are just going to cause you to get fat. They'll actually help to nourish your body, build muscles, stimulate the metabolism, aid with fat burning, and satisfy those cravings. So you, you can't just eliminate. You have to replace. You have to do a swap. So you have to swap out the bad food, fill it with good food. And, and one of the things that I always encourage my coaching students when I'm working with them is instead of thinking of what you need to cut out, let's focus on what you need to add to your diet instead. So I, I, I take a totally opposite approach because if you fill up on so much good, healthy, nourishing food, you're physically going to have less room for the unhealthy processed foods afterwards. And that is my personal strategy. Like I eat a lot of food. The volume of food I eat is probably more than the most people, even people who are overweight and out of shape. Like I eat a lot, a lot of volume. I fill up on vegetables. Like every single meal, I have this ginormous garden salad where I'll sometimes eat an entire bag of salad. Like I buy those, those pre-made uh, store-bought bags of salad because it's so quick and convenient. Like that's my healthy fast food. And I will get a full bag of salad, put it in this great big mixing bowl. Uh, and one of my strategies is I'll fill that up and I'll put a little tiny bit of salad dressing over it, some salt and pepper and dry spices. And then I'll get some fat-free plain Greek yogurt, mix it in. So I get this creamy salad dressing texture and flavor that I enjoy but it's high in protein, it's high in nutrients, and it's low in fat and calories. So I get the eating satisfaction, the volume of food fills me up, 
and then I, I have less room for the junk food afterwards. I also make sure to fill up on protein, you know, lean meat, chicken, fish, eggs, dairy, all that kind of stuff is very satiating. It fills your belly and it curbs your appetite versus eating sugar and fat, which is, it actually stimulates your appetite. Like the more junk food you eat, the more you want to eat it because it doesn't satiate you. But when you're eating on uh, processed foods, the protein and the vegetables and the fruit, that actually satisfies your appetite, fills your belly, and it controls your cravings. Like you just can't sit down and endlessly eat chicken breasts, right? But you can sit down and just endlessly eat potato chips. <laughs> I gotta move over again. We have another vehicle coming through here, right? Guys are off out uh, off road in, in their trucks and their jeeps right now, so uh, they're up on the trails getting their form of distraction. All right, hey, how's it going? I mean, that that's better than uh, sitting at home and uh, <laughs> watching TV. At least he's getting outside. Hopefully, he doesn't have uh, potato chips and junk food in the truck there as well. But who knows? Maybe he does. <laughs> But you have to fill the void. That's what I'm getting at. You, you can't think of just eliminating because elimination never lasts. That's just going to be fueled by willpower. And willpower is a very finite resource. Sooner or later, you're going to run out of willpower. You need to find ways that you can stick to a healthy eating and an exercise routine without relying on willpower. It has to be something you actually enjoy. So this is my strategy. And this is how I've, I've totally turned my life around over the last few years because in the past, it was for me, it was always the all or nothing approach. Like I was either on this crazy hardcore cutting diet and depriving myself and just relying on pure willpower and deprivation to get in shape. And it was either I was on the diet or there was no diet. There was no in between. Well, now I've mastered the in between. Like how can I live a healthy lifestyle, enjoy the process and not feel like it's a burden? And that is the secret. You have to learn how to enjoy it. So if you would like some help with this, if you would like help with how to enjoy a healthy eating, a healthy lifestyle, a healthy exercise routine that's not torturous, it's not something you dread, not something you hate, but something you actually enjoy doing. If you would like some help with this, I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you and help you to come up with some strategies. I'll share some stuff that's worked for me, share some stuff that's worked with my personal coaching students, and we can come up with a realistic action plan that fits you, your personal preferences, your lifestyle, your schedule, all that kind of stuff, and get you in your best shape. Because regardless of, of your current situation, whether you're overweight and out of shape, whether you're, you're at your ideal weight, but you're not happy because you got a bit of lower belly fat there and you just want to like lose that gut and build some lean muscle in the process, you know, whatever it is that you want to achieve and, and regardless of where you're at right now, progress is always possible, right? And I'm not saying you're going to become a, a top level bodybuilder or fitness model or anything like that, but you can become the best version of you. And that's what we're after here. We're looking at becoming the best version of ourselves, a healthy version. So you can be comfortable with what you see in the mirror. You can be comfortable to take your shirt off and look at yourself and say, you know what? Yeah, I'm not perfect, but I'm happy. You know, I'm happy to, to uh, be able to, like, go, when we can, go to the beach again and, you know, uh, go to the swimming pool or, you know, you can be happy, like, if you're at the gym and you're in the locker room, like, you can get in change. You don't have to be embarrassed by how fat and out of shape you are. You can actually be happy with yourself. So if you would like some help with coming up with a realistic action plan and discussing some strategies, send me an email. My personal email address is leeh at leehayward.com. I'll put a link to it down in the description of this video below and reach out to me, like reach out and we can have a conversation. We can have a chat and see if we can come up with a realistic action plan that works for you. All right. So that's enough for me. I've been blabbing on long enough. I'm going to get out there now and actually enjoy the ride. So uh, hopefully this, this gave you some food for thought, you know, to, to really reevaluate what you're doing, how you're dealing with stressful situations, how you're dealing with the whole COVID, the shutdown and everything else, and give you some ideas on how you can get the same benefits that you want. You know, the stress relief, the feeling good about yourself, the distraction, the, the all that stuff but do it in a healthy way that's going to enhance your life, not in a way that's going to take away. So that's what I want for you. Again, if you need some help, reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you. And if you haven't already done so, uh, subscribe to the Total Fitness Bodybuilding YouTube channel. Click on that notification bell so you get updates whenever I add new videos. And check out the videos I have to the side there. I'll put up a link to some healthy uh, snack food options that will actually help nourish your body and control those cravings. I also have a link there to some healthy fast food options because I know convenience is a big factor here. A lot of people like the convenience of fast food. So if 
you want fast food convenience, but have the foods be healthy, nourishing, building your metabolism, burning body fat, check out those videos to the side. I'll have them linked up there. And uh, I look forward to talking to you soon. So have yourself a great one. Take care and stay safe.